Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In this series, we will cover each of the most important Excel objects individually. But before we do that, we're going to have some introductory videos to fully understand what is the Excel object model. Excel VBA is an object-based programming language, which means it uses the idea of encapsulating a state and operations inside objects. Excel objects are arranged in a hierarchy that governs the Excel object model. Let me show you a couple of pictures to clarify that. Every element in Excel is represented by an object in VBA. So for example, the application object represents the entire Microsoft Excel application itself. An Excel file or workbook is represented by the VBA workbook object. As you see here, we have three workbook objects. And then a workbook has worksheet objects, and inside a worksheet we can have a range object, and so on and so forth. We have already seen that in the tutorial for beginners. Now let me show you another picture. Excel objects are arranged in a hierarchy, and they can act as containers for other objects. So the Excel application object sits at the top of a hierarchy and contains other objects such as workbook objects. It also contains other objects which are not in this picture, like the window object, uh, add-in objects, or for example, the worksheet function object, which we will cover also in this series. And to be more precise, it contains the workbook's collection object. And we will see that later, because in the next video, we're going to see the difference between object and collections. But for now, let's just say the collections contains each of the workbook objects, which contain each individual worksheet object. And a worksheet object can contain other objects, such as the range object. And the range object has a sales property that returns a sales object, which has other properties that return the font, the interior, and the borders objects for the cell. Now let's see what that does all mean while coding VBA in the code editor. So for example, if we want to reference a range object, we could initially follow the object hierarchy. So we would start with the application, which is at the top of the hierarchy. Then for the application object, we will refer the following object, in this case it's going to be the workbooks object, and we will just refer to the first workbook like that. And then we could refer to the worksheets object. As you see here, we have sheet one, so we could write sheet one. And finally, we could now refer to the range, let's say range D4 to H8. And here we could use any properties of methods, and that's something you already know about, but we're going to see in much detail later. So let's say we select that range, for example. So this is a fully qualified reference to range D4H8. So it tells exactly which range in which worksheet and in which workbook of the application. Now, some of the objects do not really need a fully qualified reference. So the workbooks, the worksheets, and the range objects as well don't need a fully qualified reference. So we could also write simply this here. So if we don't use the qualifier and omit specific references, Excel uses the active object as qualifier. So in this case, it's going to use the active sheet and the active workbook. That would be actually the same as writing active workbook, the active sheet, range D4H8 select. So we need to qualify the reference as much as needed to make sure there is no room for errors. So for example, if we have a macro that is working with sheet one and it's triggered from sheet one, we may not need to refer, we may not need to specify the worksheet. In some other situations, we may have a macro that applies to whatever worksheet is active. And sometimes it's also important to reference or to specify the workbook. 
In some cases, we just want to make sure the macro is running on the workbook that contains the macro. In that case, we are going to use this workbook as a reference. Otherwise, we may want to specify a workbook with a name. We're going to talk more about referencing objects in the next video. So in this video, I just wanted to make sure you understand what does the object hierarchy means. Now, some other objects actually require a qualified reference. So that, for example, that's the case of the shape object. The shape object requires a worksheet reference. So we could say active sheet dot shapes rectangle one select. That wouldn't work without the active sheet. In this case, Excel will not assume the active sheet is the is the reference object. So each shape object in the shapes collection is a specific of a particular worksheet, and therefore we need a worksheet reference. So in the next video, we will see the difference between objects and collections. And then we'll have a couple of videos to see, to understand very well how to work with properties and methods. And then also we will talk about events, and finally we will see what is the object browser and how can we use it and get the most of it. And not only the object browser, also the automatic list references that we can get while coding in the code window. We're going to see all that in the following videos. See you there and thank you for watching.